The multi-platinum, Grammy Award-winning singer, Broadway star, Las Vegas headliner, and working mother, Tony Braxton. Life began in the small town of Severn, Maryland. I'm originally from Severn, Maryland. Um, it's a small town. I'm the oldest of six kids, and being a Maryland girl, I call myself a crab. I was really great growing up there, very family-oriented. We got to eat a lot, a lot of seafood. Our street, Queenstown Road, was that whole street was black, black people. And it was families who left land to their children, children, children. So like the land we lived on was left by my great aunt to my mom and they built a house on it. So it was very traditional, school teachers and things like that. It was exciting. She was my first child. So of course it was exciting and God, she was so beautiful. With a minister father and a hair care instructor mother, Tony grew up in a strict yet close Christian household where faith in God and gospel music was a part of everyday life for Tony, her five siblings, and her parents. Mama P came a preacher's kid and the oldest. <laughs> so for me, I was the experimental child. My parents kind of learned a lot on me. And being a PK growing up in church, you know, that kind of prepared me to do what I'm doing today because the pulpit was kind of like my stage and the microphone, I always had that. I always got to practice my craft, which is a good thing. We fell in love with the apostolic doctrine. Growing up, I, we were apostolic or Pentecostal, tomato, tomatoes, kind of whatever you choose to call it. And it was very strict. I didn't wear pants until I was 14 years old. Growing up for me, I didn't celebrate a lot of holidays. They were considered pagan holidays. So I was very religious. I was that odd girl at school, those really saved religious people that you knew down the street. I was that person. <laughs> so Tony has such a wonderful and a beautiful spirit. She never complained. I played piano at church. A lot of people don't know I played piano. I've been playing since I was probably 10 years old. Well, I recognize that from the time Tony was about two, you know, I, I would sing with her and she would sing along with me. Tony was about uh, three years old, maybe three and a half, uh, when she started singing in the church choir. Well, she had a first solo at the age of four. She always had a low voice, always. She would wake up in the morning and, and say, good morning, mommy, you know, rather than, good morning, mommy. And so when she had her first solo, um, almost sound bass, like she was a bass singer, but it was gorgeous. My family had a group, we called ourselves the Braxton family. By the time my youngest sister, Tamar, was born, I'm like 12 years older than her, we had like a little Braxton group, kind of like the Jacksons or the Silvers or what else was there, the Jets. And I played piano, my other sister played the drums, and we would, my dad would preach at different churches and we were his choir. Growing up, we sang a lot. That's all we did. We had rehearsal just about every day. Wasn't really allowed to go out with our friends. We went, oh my God. Um, all over the East Coast singing to special events. People would see us, they're like, oh, here are the Braxton family, they're here, why don't you render us two or three selections? And we're like, oh, I don't feel like doing this today. With their strict religious beliefs, Tony's parents forbid her and her siblings from listening to secular music. I used to sneak and listen to this group called Switch. My neighbor down the street had this album. I was in love with El DeBarge. He was so cute to me. He had the super high, sexy voice, I thought. So I would sneak and listen to him, but I had to be very careful because my mom would know if someone was messing with her record player because that means James Cleveland wasn't playing or something like that. So by the time I was 14, I remember you, I would sneak and watch Soul Train. I learned about Rick James and that's when I fell in love with Anita Baker. Anita Baker is the person that I saw on Soul Train. I said, I want to be like her when I grow up. Despite Tony's musical gifts, her family's staunchly conservative religious values often caused Tony to feel like a misfit in high school. She used to say people never really liked her growing up because her clothes were so ugly and she could never do anything. She would always have to be in the house singing with us. It's really weird, I wasn't very attractive when I was younger. Not in a fugly way, but just odd. An odd fish because how we dressed. I wore dresses all the time in school and I was the outcast and who wanted to be in the A group. I've never seen an ugly duckling picture. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> she looks the same as she did in her high school pictures. After high school, Tony dreamed of becoming a professional singer. But she followed her parents' wishes and enrolled in the nearby historically black university, Bowie State, her father's alma mater. I was just always that odd person everywhere. It took a long time before I got comfortable with myself. It wasn't until I went to college 
that I kind of felt my identity. I went to college to be a teacher, but that wasn't the real plan. It was plan B, probably plan C, because the real goal was to be a singer. I was very focused. I knew this is what I wanted to do. That's when I found my voice. I would sing at the opening of a Band-Aid, the opening of an envelope. Anything they had in the Baltimore, D.C. area, I would perform so people could hear me. I was in the Miss Black America pageant representing Baltimore. I didn't win. I made it to the finalists, but I didn't win, and I was the only performer singer, everyone else did interpretations like, I am black, I am proud, I am woman. Next, a chance meeting opens a big door for Tony.